No, if your no, then don't keep your hand up if it's not about fashion. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to play a trick here. Let's go to Ukraine. The department has any comment on reports or Ukrainian government claims that uh, two more planes have been shot down from Russia? Yes, we have seen those reports. Uh, we are still looking into them. Um, you know, we have, of course, ha seen a history of, of the separatists shooting down planes in the past. I think uh, about a dozen before MH17. Uh, and look, if true, and we hopefully will be able to confirm whether it's true soon. Uh, it would only uh, be further evidence that Russian vast separatists are using advanced surface-to-air weaponry less than a week after shooting down a civilian airliner and killing 20, 298 people. Uh, again, it's hard to imagine any of this happening without Russian support. Dovetailing off that, um, I mean, you said to me yesterday that the fighting is by and large outside of the 25-mile radius. 40 kilometer or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Or at whatever. Point, the numbers matter. At, at this point, I think it was... Mm -hmm three miles outside of the crash site. I no, mean, I think you have wrong information there. There hasn't been, they have maintained, the U Ukrainians have maintained a ceasefire. The 40 kilometer ceasefire they have declared around the crash site. The Ukrainians have maintained it. Okay, are you concerned that a break in ceasefire could impede the investigation? Well, obviously we would be concerned about uh, the separatists not upholding a ceasefire. The Ukrainians have repeatedly shown their willingness and ability to do so. Okay. No. Wait, can I, can I continue on Ukraine? Uh -huh. right. okay. um, well, yesterday, um, this is sort of related to Ukraine, I guess, and Russia. <laughs> Yesterday, the intel community said they were going to lay out evidence, mm -hmm. sort of backing their assertions about who brought down Malaysia Airlines yep. 17. They did lay out a bunch of different things, but they uh -huh. didn't actually lay out the, the real documentation that supports those assertions. I'm not Why sure exactly what you're looking for. Well, they, they did a couple things yesterday. They showed, uh, they walked through an intelligence assessment case and they talked about some additional pieces of declassified information that I can walk through today that bolsters our case uh, that we know what happened here. They also uh, showed uh, imagery of training facilities. They showed imageries of this site, including a trajectory based on classified information that they were able to provide that showed the trajectory of the SA-11. So those are important. And let's get, let, let, let me finish yeah, and then you can keep following up. So a couple things they said yesterday, which I think are significant, which we had not said before. Uh, that the audio data provided to the press, so we talked a lot about these open source reports, right, these audio uh, messages that people have said uh, are certain people or that prove things. Uh, they were provided to the press by the Ukrainians. It was evaluated by the intelligence community analysts who confirmed these were authentic conversations between known separatist leaders. Uh, and then another key point they talked about yesterday, and we can talk more about the rest of this, is the this uh, notion the Russians have put out there about a Ukrainian fighter jet. Uh, they've argued that an Su-25 fighter might have shot down the aircraft with an air-to-air -air missile. Uh, they have judged that that engagement uh, would be implausible for the following reasons. The Su-25 is a ground attack aircraft. The only missiles it carries are short-range, <coughs> excuse me, are short-range infrared guided missiles. Ground photography from the crash site is consistent with the expected damage from a surface-to-air missile but it is, does not correspond, in fact, is inconsistent with what we would expect to see for an air-to-air -air missile, as Russia claims. Uh, third, Russia, this is a little separately here, uh, has also released a map with the alleged locations of Ukrainian SA-11 units within range of the crash. This is another red herring they've put out there. We are confident that this information is incorrect. The nearest Ukrainian operational SA-11 unit is located well out of the range from both the launch and the crash sites. So, Part of their case yesterday was not only giving more information about what we know, but giving our professional uh, technical assessment of some of the Russian claims that I think uh, we have tried to increasingly when said, knock when down. They, when you said they showed uh, mm -hmm. evidence of this, what do you mean by that? They showed. They sh I mean, did, well, they, 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 did they have a presentation? I, they I, did. They yeah. did. They showed some imagery. They showed a number of images. They showed some maps. They showed some graphics. Uh, I'm happy for you to get in touch with DNI Public Affairs, who can probably give you that packet. Oh, okay. But they showed. They showed some. Uh, one of the maps uh, that we actually have posted on our Facebook page in our Kiev embassy that shows the trajectory of the SA-11 missile. That trajectory is based on classified information. I can't detail all of what that information is, uh, but that is based on the information we have. And some of the evidence the U.S. is relying on are, are social media postings and videos made mm -hmm. public by the Ukrainian government. Have okay. those all been authenticated? Again, that's why I said the audio data, which is part of the social media, has been uh, authenticated by the intelligence community analysts. Uh, social media is obviously only one part of the of the puzzle here. It's something we look at, but obviously we back everything up uh, to the extent that we can, when we can, with other intelligence as well. Marie. 
<clears throat> on, on your three on your three things that you say were new one on the audio data being analyzed yep. and being authenticated that yep. was not new yesterday that was actually in the statement that the embassy in Kiev put out on Sunday morning okay. before um, before Secretary Kerry appeared but on the, the intelligence uh, community had on authenticated all of it I, it's my understanding that that was not all out there on Sunday but I'm happy to check well I, I believe it was but okay, I mean there's well, no I disagree with you but I'm happy to check what's the next thing well, you can look at the statement. It yep. says that they've been authenticated. So, uh, so I would say that that wasn't new. Okay, I'm happy to um, check. Secondly, I'm not sure that I, I know that there were some suggestions that the Ukrainian fighter plane shot down this with, with a missile. So the Russians but the, basically had a couple of alternative explanations. There was a Ukrainian right. fighter jet. I think we the intelligence community went to great lengths yesterday to right. show why that's not the case. The other. Uh, one of the other things they said was that it was a Ukrainian SA-11 system that the Ukrainians had fired. Again, I think they made very clear why that's not also the case. Uh, but the the theory that, or the, I don't know what you, the, the suggestion isn't necessarily that the Ukrainian jet, I mean, you have, dis, you've discovered that the Ukrainian jet was in the vicinity, but it was not it capable of shooting. No, I can't Japan. confirm that there was even a Ukrainian jet. We have no confirmation that I have seen that there oh, was a Ukrainian was jet. I'm not saying there wasn't. I just can't right. confirm it. But regardless, the notion that this kind of Ukrainian jet the Russians are talking about uh, could have done this with the kind of missile okay. and the kind of debris we've seen, it just doesn't match because up. Because I think the suggestion is that, the, that it, whoever fired this missile may have been shooting for that plane, like what we saw today, in terms Which of Which in no shoot way down. makes it better. Well, I'm not saying it does. I'm not saying it does at all. And but I, I it's don't not know what the intentions are if whoever right. was on the ground pushing the button. I don't. And 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 the last thing about this. Clearly, well, clearly, I know the intentions were to launch a sophisticated uh, missile and to kill people. Whether those they were trying to kill Ukrainian military officers or civilians, we're still waiting to find uh, out. Uh, I, yeah. Okay. I'm not arguing that okay. one is better than the other. I know. I'm not. I'm just not saying that. I'm just saying. To your question. Um, and then on the, tr the tr this trajectory thing that you uh -huh. said was put out by the. Uh, I didn't say that was new yesterday. We posted that a few days ago. Right. Uh -huh. But I mean, you know, if you just look at that, a lay person looking at it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a line drawn on a, drawn on a satellite photo with no nothing to back it up. Well, as I said, it's based on a, a series of classified information. Which we have to. Which we, we are. In, we have to take the leap of faith to believe well, that. Matt, we right? are trying to put as much out of this, yeah. out information out about this, as possible. Uh, we are trying very hard to do so. It is a process that takes, I think, more time than any of us. Certainly you or I would like, but right. I think I would make the point that it's much more time consuming to declassify real evidence than to make it up, which is what the Russians have to, been doing for days now. Okay. Well, be that, be that as it may, are you saying that, that at some point we are the working IC to is hopeful to, that, that they will be able to We're working put, to get more information declassified and put out there. Uh, as quickly as we can. It's just a difficult process. Okay, but do you, under, do, you, do you understand that given the conflicting claims, no matter how ridiculous you say the other side's version is, and no matter how implausible it might be, but you know, saying that you've put together the imagery showing the, the, the route of trajectory. this trajectory showing just imagery. one piece. It's one well, piece of evidence. I know, but evidence. anyone can draw a line on a, on a, on a map. They can. I mean, I, I'm not That's saying not that. That's not what I, our intelligence community does. That's not what the U.S. government does when we go out there and present a case to the world. We have, wait, we have to protect sensitive sources and methods. We have to, because if we, if we don't, we won't be able to get this kind of information in the future if they're compromised because of a declassification. Believe me, I want to be able to declassify more. Right. They want okay. to be able to declassify more. And it's not about a leap of faith. We are laying out a very comprehensive argument based on a number of different pieces, right? So if you look at all of them in totality, Right. Look at the entire picture. It presents a very compelling case about the kind of missile, where it was fired from. Those are the two key pieces, right? The kind of missile that took down this plane. We are very confident it's an SA-11. We are very confident it was fired from Russian-controlled territory. We are very confident that the two alternate stories the Russians put forward aren't plausible. Who put their finger on the trigger? We still need to find that out. Right. But suffice to say, the Russian separatists, we believe, fired this in general could not be doing what they're doing without the Russians, and responsibility lays at the feet of President Putin, not just for this, but for every incident that we have seen throughout this conflict, like, period. Like, so Putin is, it's Putin whose fault this is. That's what you're saying. I think well, I was just okay. pretty clear. So you said, but you say it's a very compelling case, but you, it is a circumstantial case, is it not? It is a, it is a case based on a number of different pieces of evidence, Matt. 
across the board, a number of different pieces, whether you're looking at what we talked about yesterday, whether you're looking at what we've seen on social media, whether you're looking at the kind of SA-11, which is a missile that essentially gets fired straight up, uh, does what it does, and that's exactly what we saw in this case as well. So we've laid out a very uh, detailed case. We will continue to declassify as much as we can. Uh, but again, we've been very open about our assessments here. The Russians have repeatedly lied about what's happening on the ground. They said there weren't troops in Crimea when there were troops all over Crimea. So there's just no credibility on their side. And I understand the need to put out more information, but look, the notion that they've shot down dozens, over, do over a dozen planes now, and this is just the one that wasn't them, also just doesn't pass the common sense test. Okay, hold on a second. So, but, and I understand the, your desire to protect sources and methods, but we have here a incredible tragedy where, you know, 300, almost 300 people died. Are, I agree. Is that, are protecting sources and methods are more important than getting no. to the bottom of who? Well, those two things aren't mutually exclusive here. A, we think an investigation can go forward that will get to the bottom of what happened here. We believe we do have a good assessment about uh, the things I've talked about. The investigation about who did it specifically to a person is ongoing. Um, but look, part of the reason we protect sources and methods is because we want to be able to see these things in the future if they tragically, something like this were to happen again in the same area, the way we found out information this time. So, so you're saying that, but I, so just to be clear, that the, the tr imagery, the trajectory imagery that you have. That and you, that one sheet. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right, exactly. I think it's a green that line. Is the, yes, that this, there are sources and methods for how you know that trajectory uh -huh. that our, people are concerned are going to be somehow correct. tainted. If or, Correct. Not, or, not just tainted, but compromised. Con that, that are going to be compromised? Yes. If you give correct. I mean, well, I, okay, I guess, I guess. Having spent six years in the intelligence I know, community, that's why I know, I know, I know that's there why are a variety of ways we can figure these things out, many of which are quite sensitive and many of which I think we don't want to lose. So, right. look, believe me, I'm pushing my colleagues at the DNI as okay. much as I love these do you, but I, conversations with you about this. We are pushing and they're pushing and we'll see if okay. we can get more. But do you, I mean, I have would no you expect question. or you don't know? You don't you, you don't expect more, or you? I have no do, idea. Right. I, look, I, I think there will be. I think we're just working through it. Okay. One uh, one one other thing that's unrelated to.